Let's talk about my switch from Mac Pro to Mac Studio and how I'm going to deal with the lack of PCIe expansion card in the Mac Studio. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you haven't seen a video outlining the reason why I'm switching over from the Mac Pro to the Mac Studio, I highly recommend that you check that out first. I'll leave a link to them up here and in the description below. This said, the Mac Studio lacks PCIe expansion. Obviously, you can't put a card inside there and a card won't even fit inside this machine. This is the way how Apple has designed this machine. It is intended this way and it makes sense, but I would love to get a PCIe expansion. So inside my Mac Pro, I do have a couple of PCIe storage card, but the one that I'm gonna focus on for this particular video is the Sonnet M.2 4x4. Now there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one is that I configured this Mac Studio with a standard M1 Ultra configuration that has one terabyte SSD. Personally, that's cramping my style because all the Air Machine has two terabyte SSD internally, so I need to get external storage. I could go out and buy a large, for example, SSD and link it up to the system. However, there are a couple of downsides to it. For me to get a very large SSD that's equivalent to the amount that I have on this card, it's going to cost a lot of money and the speed won't be quite as fast as what this card can do. So to give you a background for this card, it has four NVMe SSDs on the card. There are two terabyte Samsung 970 EVO Plus and they're all linked together using this utility RAID. They all are in RAID 0. I have this backup on a daily basis to my NAS, so the data on there is safe and it can read and write on this Mac Pro at around six gigabytes per second. What I like to do is take this card out and use it as an external storage on my Mac Studio and also to expand the storage inside my Mac Studio in a way. The answer to this question is an eGPU. So the one that I have with me, this is the Atikio Node. I'm not sure if they still sell this model or not. I think this is an older one, but you can get any eGPU enclosure and they should work. Most of the eGPU enclosure now uses Thunderbolt 3 technology and you don't really need a GPU on the inside because realistically you're, you have a slot for PCIe card and like I said, as long as the card is compatible to Mac, it should work without any problem. So it doesn't have to be a GPU. So what we're gonna do is transplant this card and put it in here. Now, a couple of things beyond just, for instance, getting an SSD, for example, a new one is gonna cost a lot of money and the speed won't be as high. Obviously, when I transplant this card in here, I'm not gonna get six gigabytes per second read and write because that's definitely going to exceed the bandwidth for Thunderbolt 4 and there are a lot of overhead. But nonetheless, the read and write speed on this external PCIe enclosure is definitely gonna be much faster than majority of SSDs that you can get out on the market today is going to have a larger storage space and it's still going to be much faster than, for example, if I want to use my NAS with 10 gigabit Ethernet connection. Before we do that, I want to quickly show you the website for my eGPU enclosure, which is the one you see right now. This is the Note. There are different versions to these, so you can certainly look at what is available on the market. And if it's not available from, for instance, a KTO, you can also certainly look at, for instance, Sonnet or Razer. They do make those as well, and they generally should be compatible to Mac. I know the Sonnet one would definitely be compatible with the Mac for sure. Now, the other thing, if you're looking for something like this, my recommendation is to look at this on the used market, whether that be Facebook, eBay, or something like that, because these are being sold on the market on a daily basis, and you would definitely get a much better deal than buying new. And as long as they work, it doesn't really matter whether they are new or not. The chances are most people are not going to really abuse these you know, enclosure that much anyway. Now, the other thing that I want to mention is that the node, the one that I have, only has one PCIe expansion slot. There are certain ones that have two. For example, the node dual has two PCIe expansion. You can certainly choose to get those if you want to link multiple cards to your Mac Studio. You can do it that way. For me, this one card is going to work just fine. The other storage card that I have, well, I'm just probably going to sell that off or something like that and not really worry about that. Okay, so now let's transplant the card. The one thing I'll say that I really love about the Mac Pro is that it's super over-engineered that everything is all just nicely aluminum CNC. I mean, it's just a joy to work with. So I'm going to unlock the card and I'm simply going to just wiggle a little bit, pull straight out. This is pretty much my Sonnet M.2 4x4. And what I'm simply going to do is put this card into this machine. I'm going to quickly unscrew 
the screw there first. Now, obviously this is not anything close to Apple design ethos or anything like that. It is more utilitarian than anything else. So you're not gonna get, you know, the nice aluminum chassis design from Apple when you use something like this, but you can certainly hide this somewhere on your desk and, you know, put it in a corner somewhere where you don't really see it. All right, so let's put in the card. And rather than putting a top cover on, what I'm gonna do is just power this on, link it up to my laptop. We're gonna run a quick speed test so you can see how fast it runs. And then what I'll do is just finish this off the camera, but at least you know that this is going to work, for example, with any Mac. And like I said, I'm not gonna demo this on my Mac Studio because I have a link of display up and everything. But to do this on a MacBook Pro just makes a lot of sense. All right, plug it in, I'm gonna turn this on. Now the nice thing about using this utility as a RAID is that when you move this between different machines, it was gonna show up right away. For instance, I have my eight terabyte drive that just shows up. I can open, I can see all my files on there, which is really amazing. And what I'm simply gonna do now is select that as the target drive. So let's do that with this speed test. And we'll start the read and write process. So right now I'm getting around 1,800 megabytes per second write, which is actually not bad at all. It's close to two gigabytes per second. And, oh, actually it's bumping up a little bit more. And then I'm getting read at around like 2,400 megabytes per second. So this is a really great speed. This is pretty much double a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection. So for me, this is going to work out just fine. And this is definitely going to help expand the storage inside my Mac Studio. So anyway, if you're looking for a solution like this, I hope that an eGPU would work for you too. If you have any questions or comment, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And in our trust.